Hey everyone, I want to give you a quick overview on what an actual report looks like, some talking points about the report, where the data is being pulled, and pretty much everything about this uh, really cool report, right? So let's talk about the structure of the report and what all these buttons do, right? So what's cool about INSA reports is, for one, INSA reports is completely white labeled, right? So if your Dashclicks account, if your custom domain name and your logo is uploaded and set up inside of your Dashclicks account, that makes your entire INSA reports account completely white labeled. So whatever information you have in your main Dashclicks account is automatically going to pull in here. So this is going to be your marketing logo or your agency logo. So whatever logo you have in your Dashix account, it's automatically going to pull and display right here. Same thing with the contact information in your profile. That's automatically going to display right here. It's going to get your profile image. It's going to get your first name and the name of your agency. Then it's going to get your email address and your phone number. Uh, and so that's going to be displayed to people or actual prospects who are viewing this report, right? So once again, also, if in this case, I'm on demo.dashix.com, which is just used for demo purposes. But once you set up your custom domain, this will obviously change to whatever your domain name is in Dashclix as well. So once again, the report is fully, fully white labeled. Um, not only that, so let's talk about some cool buttons and things that you can do right here inside of the INSA report. So first thing you can do, and this is, keep in mind guys, this is both you and your prospects. Um, so both, both of you guys can actually view this report. So um, you can download the report and this will download a beautiful PDF version. It's like 10 or 15 pages, a beautiful PDF version uh, of this entire report. Uh, and then you can also print it. So if you just want to print it and maybe walk into a business or, or, or meet somebody uh, for a meeting and, and gather some reporting uh, analysis, uh, that's a great way to do it as well. Uh, once you run a report, you'll see right here on the top, it'll actually display the day that the report was ran, which is essentially when the contact or the content in here was last updated. So in this case, I ran the report on October 14, 2019, which is today. So that's going to be essentially the date that's going to be put right here. Uh, also, the um, in this case, you'll see I ran a report for Roto Rooter Plumbing and Water Cleanup, and this is their address, right? So this is basically the business's information. Um, so that's going to display right there as well, right? So the business's name that you're running the report for and the address will always display right over here in the left bar. Um, also, another cool thing to really look at is this bar is also, you can actually hide it. So you can open and close the bar uh, just for uh, uh, cool reporting purposes. Um, also, another thing here is if they, if your prospect actually clicks on this and they want to get in contact with you, um, they can actually fill out this form. And whatever email you have in your agency profile, it's going to send this form submission directly to that email. So let's just say if multiple sales reps are creating Insta reports inside of your Dashlicks account, not a problem. Keep in mind that each Insta report that's created is created on behalf of a specific salesperson or, or person that's logged in um, as their maybe an account manager uh, profile inside of Dashlicks, right? So it's going to use that information and it's going to place that information right in here. Uh, then you'll see as we start scrolling down in here, you're going to see a bunch of these videos throughout each one of these sections. You see a video here for listings, video for review, video for social, for a website, um, for SEO, for Google ads and Facebook ads. The cool part about these videos is we actually created white label videos for each one of these sections, which will walk your prospect through exactly what they're about to read and kind of how everything works. And they're fully white label videos. So you don't have to worry about any dash branding or anything like that. Also throughout the entire report, you'll see a lot of these call to actions, which will basically say, get started everywhere. So if your prospect clicks on any of these, once again, it's going to open up this uh, form field right here. If they fill this out, this information is going to go directly to your email address. Okay. So let's go through the uh, first section here. So you'll also see, we also like to personalize these reports a lot. So if the business name, which is in this case, Roto Rooter Plumbing and Water, it's going to start plugging that in pretty much everywhere inside of the content. And we do that with a lot of things that we do here at Dashclicks, right? So you'll see that pumped out throughout this entire report to really make the report 
personalized. So it looks like it's like literally a custom report that's created just for Roto Rooter plumbing and water cleanup, okay? Then what it's gonna do is it's gonna put in the information that you put in when you actually created the report. It's gonna grab that information and display that right here. Uh, in most cases, it's gonna pull this information directly from their Google business listing, which is their Google My Business listing. Uh, and that's because we have the Google uh, integration API, which you can just search a business and it'll automatically pull all the information right in here for you. Um, another cool feature that we added is we actually are pulling in pictures. These are live recent photos from their Google business listing. Once again, to make the report more personalized to give it that personalized interaction, right? So they'll be able to see pictures of their trucks and their crew and their team all right here as an example, right? Uh, then we have the overall score. Um, so this is basically going to give you the overall score across all of these different sections. So think about this as almost like a report card. And every, one, every single one of these gradings, which is A, B, C, D, uh, and F, uh, every single one of those grades will equate to a percentage. And then that percentage, um, all these get tallied up. And then it, it basically goes uh, right here into the overall percentage. And you'll see that in here as well. And you'll also see the grades for each one of these sections lists out here as well. Now, one thing just to notate, guys, the only section that it does not have a physical grade is Facebook ads. Uh, and that's because Facebook doesn't provide us with... Um, uh, the ad um, information, like the data from the actual ad account. And in order to do that, you'd have to actually be physically logged into Facebook and provide access. So what we were able to do here is pull in all of the active ads that are running, and we'll go through that in just a second. But everything else has an actual grade attached to it. So let's start off with listings. So if we go into the listing section, first thing we see here is our system's gonna go out and find any one of the listings that are available within our network. And we have up to about 70 listings and depending on the country that you're in, sometimes it'll be 20 listings, 50 listings, 60 listings, 70 listings. So depending on um, the category of the business and the location that they're in, uh, that's where we're gonna be able to actually scan. And over here, it's gonna tell you uh, your listing accuracy. So this is basically saying 60% of the listings that we found is accurate, okay? Then it's gonna basically give you an overview. It's gonna say that we found 45 listings, okay? Um, out of the 53 that were available within our network that we searched through, okay? So we found 45, basically yeah, this customer, or Roto-Rooter Plumbing and Water Cleanup has 45 out of 53 available listings that we scanned within our network, okay? 43 of those listings had errors. So think about that, guys. So many of their listings actually had errors. And over here, what's cool is we have a listing accuracy overview where we tell you, hey, 75% of the listings have accurate have an accurate business name. 47% of the listings have an accurate address, and 58% of the listings have an accurate phone number. But not only that, guys, we actually go granular and show you where the errors are. So you can actually pinpoint these errors and show this to your prospects and actually do this live. So a lot of the times we'll tell you guys the best way to actually sell services is to show this report first and then actually go out and show them like every single pain point and offer them solutions. So we can see here like in Yahoo, uh, it looks like they have the wrong phone number, right? So it looks like the phone number, which is the phone number that's listed right here ending in 9915, um, it's actually not the right phone number. So they have a wrong phone number. This could be maybe a, an old phone number that they have. Uh, this could be a phone number for maybe a different location. So whatever the case may be, this is wrong information here. So that needs to be fixed immediately. Same thing with the address here. It looks like they have the wrong address in Yelp. It looks like their phone number is not even found here. Hours of operation is missing. Their listing's not found here, not found here. Phone number is missing. Hours of operation is missing. Phone numbers. So like, think about this, like guys. Um, and what's cool uh, is like you're pinpointing every single pain point. So let's say as an example, I want to go to Yelp. Um, I can see that the address is incorrect. So I'm just going to go ahead and view the live listing inside of Yelp. So it will actually open up a new tab and it will load up the listing so you can actually prove that the information is not correct. So we can see that they got the wrong phone number on here, ending in 2023, yeah. Or actually, I'm sorry, the wrong address, right? So yeah, it looks like they have a Doral address in here, right? So every single one of these, you can just click on it and actually go granular into the specific data and pinpoint all the pain points, okay? 
So not only that, let's go to actual reviews now. And by the way, guys, at the bottom of every section, of course, we put a call to action. So basically says, would you like to be found in all of these directory listings uh, with accurate business information and start generating more customers for rotor room or plumbing and water cleanup? We can help. And then just a call to action to get in touch with you, right? So call to actions all uh, literally throughout the entire reporting system because the point of this report is to make them show them the errors and actually make them contact you okay next we're pulling in reviews so we pull in from three different review sources we pull in from google yelp and facebook reviews so what we do here is we actually tally up the amount of reviews here um, so we'll see a total tally here of reviews we'll see if there was any reviews that were found in the last six months uh, we'll tally up all the reviews and get you an average review rating score out of five right so um you know from a scare us uh, uh, a Number integer from zero to five, same thing with average or the industry average. So now what we're doing is we're taking their rating and then we're comparing it to the industry average, which is um, based on the specific category of business that they're in, which we've done our research and applied an industry average to it, okay? Then how many sources we're actually um, uh, pulling data in from? In this case, it's three, which is Yelp, Facebook, and your Google business listing and the industry average, right? So it tends to be that the industry average will only uh, have two review sources in general. Also, we'll pull in some sample reviews here. So uh, once again, like we can literally see, like look at this, like look at how bad this is, right, for a business owner. So we can see that somebody left them a review on October 29, 2018 on their Yelp profile. It was a one-star review. And if we click on this plus button, it'll actually open up the review so they can see exactly who it is and what that review was. And they can actually click on that that person and see a list of their reviews in other places where they left reviews. So once again, here's a review that they left right here. So guys, that's like a big no-no. They need to actually go out and clean that up and do some uh, some type of maintenance there, right? And then same thing we do here with uh, uh, with the three different networks. So what we do here is now we actually can see a split view. So these are gonna show you the overview specifically for Google. So there's been 100 Google reviews found. Uh, there is reviews that were done in the last six months. Average review score is 4.70. And then we'll pull in one of the reviews here. Same thing with Yelp and then same thing with Facebook. Now with Facebook, unfortunately, we can't pull in any, rev any reviews or API doesn't allow us to do that but we do have the metrics here as well now we're going to go down here to social um, so for social we see uh, uh, looks like the social media metrics for their Facebook page right so we see here that they have 35,000 um, uh, likes on their Facebook page they, they have uh, an average post they're posting about 23 times per month um, the average likes per post is 349 which is great uh, the average shares per post is 139, which is also great. And then we're, what we're doing is we're taking those numbers and we're comparing it against the industry average and the industry leaders. So you'll see some type of color combinations and different reports that you create. Green is usually means that they're doing good. Uh, yellow means that they're doing okay. Uh, and then red basically means that they're doing really bad. Okay, so these numbers will change uh, based on the algorithm that we've built to actually create the grading scale. Um, so for right now, we have Facebook and we can actually open this up and we can actually, it'll open up their Facebook page as well. Um, so that's a cool little handy trick to so just click that link and open up a new tab. Um, another one that we're actually adding into here very soon within the next couple of days or even weeks is Instagram. So we're going to report on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, then what we do is we pull in their website. So we're grading their website from mobile and desktop. So we can say here, hey, these are there's eight issues on your mobile version of your website that need to be fixed like immediately. Um, there's four that you should consider fixing and then there's 18 that pass basically our score so we're actually api straight into the google page speeds test we'll actually run this re run, run these reports and i'll show you the difference between mobile and desktop and what's cool is we go granular here as well and you can actually see like literally um, all of the things that should be fixed it'll actually put it in detail for you on both mobile and desktop things that they should consider fixing and then things that actually passed right so you'll see all that listed right here inside of the report then we go straight into SEO. So first thing that we actually do is we show their organic competitor analysis. So we actually go out and grab all of their local competitors within the area um, and or even not within the area, just in general. So all of their actual local competitors 
and we're doing what's called an overlap score. And what's cool here, guys, is very important to know, and you should get familiar with these tooltips, is we have tooltips pretty much across every single one of these metrics. So if you're unsure what it is, uh, you can just hover over. So here it'll say how similar you are to your competitors based on common SEO keywords. Or here we'll say, you know, let's go to keywords. The number of keywords for which you uh, and your competitors show up in the top 50 searches, search results of Google. So you can actually see all of these metrics right here. Then we have the organic keyword ranking. So this is actually where that specific website that you put in when you originally ran the scan, right, where this company's website is actually ranking. So you can see like septic tank services are they're ranked number one. Like these guys are actually doing really good in SEO and that's the reason why they got an A. So we can see a lot of the 10 most uh, um, uh, search keywords that are coming up, the position that they're ranking for those keywords, the keyword difficulty, the search volume that those keywords gets, and the results that they're getting. And once again, tooltips will help you guys out and show you guys exactly what these metrics are. Another cool little pro tip here that you should know is if you actually hover over any one of these, uh, it'll actually show you the page that's specifically ranking for this keyword. So you can see the keyword 24 hour plumbing if I hover the, over this. So it looks like rotorooter.com slash plumbing slash emergency plumbing is actually what's ranking number one for this specific keyword. So that's also cool to know. And then we go into their backlinks. So it looks like they have 734,000 backlinks, 5,000 of them are referring backlinks, or are coming from referring domains, um, 5,000 are coming from referring IPs, an authority score of 38, then we're talking about the different backlink types, which is text backlinks, uh, image backlinks, form backlinks, and iframe or frame backlinks, uh, and then the difference between follow and no follow backlinks. Once again, guys, uh, with tooltips, it gets in like in-depth granular uh, reporting and metrics on that as well. Uh, then we go into Google Ads. So for Google Ads, we basically pull in and show you how their Google Ads are performing. Now, guys, we're, we don't obviously have access to their Google Ads accounts, so we're pulling these metrics in from many different sources. Um, so this is kind of just an average, but it's definitely not set in stone. So here we can see that it looks like they get their their ranking in Google AdWords for about. 3.1, 3,100 keywords. Um, uh, they're getting on average of about 15,700 uh, monthly uh, clicks to their website. And they're basically spending about 441,000. And I can imagine that because Roto Rooter uh, is actually a huge franchise company. So they do a lot of advertising. And then what's cool is we actually stack it up against competitors. So we can see like how they're doing in their Google ads and then how their competitors are doing. The common keywords, the paid keywords, paid traffic, um, the, the price that they're actually spending in AdWords, some um, search engine keywords, competition level and things like that with once again guys like, like just tool tips with metrics that you can go across too. Um, then for Facebook ads, what we do is we actually pull in all of the active Facebook ads that the account is actually running at the moment. We can see it's active. We can see when, when it actually started. Um, and then we see exactly what the ads is. So if they were running 100 ads, it would literally pull all 100 of those specific ads right here into this space. In this case, we can see that they're just running two ads. Now, once again, guys, keep in mind, unfortunately, we don't grade on Facebook ads uh, because we can't really get the data and the metrics behind it. So what we actually did is we use this as more as uh, more of like a just like an on-site reporting tool where you can basically say, hey, you know what? We're looking at these Facebook ads and you know what? This this picture is probably not converting. We definitely would run, run, run some maybe video ads to test, maybe some remarketing ads. What we want to do here is maybe change up the copy because this copy is probably not converting. Uh, and then same thing here, like if we actually click on this, it'll actually take you to the link. So it looks like, like look at this. They're taking them to like an FAQ section. Like that's, that's definitely not going to convert for Facebook ads, okay? So um, a lot of really cool things here, guys. It's basically a full-blown reporting system, as you can see. So this is basically an overview of the report. Hopefully, this helps you guys out in being able to actually use this report and actually use it during the demo and just understanding pretty much what all the buttons and metrics are within the actual Insta report itself. So hopefully, this helps you out, guys. Have, an, have a wonderful day.